So uh, this is part three of the uh, series where we're comparing high game, love 2D and mono game based on the uh, original tutorial by Kids Can Code, which uh, I've featured here and will uh, put in the description. Uh, the um, C sharp code, which is what we're doing today in mono game, is found in my uh, GitHub repository here. I'll leave that. Um, again this link in the uh, description so we'll get back to seeing what it does so this is loaded into visual studio 2022 uh, i'll just start it up so you can see what it's uh, doing now once it's compiled it draws it on my other screen so again we've got this green rectangle going from side to side and the red uh, rectangles dropping on top and now if I press the space bar, it sends out a con continuous stream of uh, bullets. If I just touch the space bar singly, then I, I can fire off individual bullets. So that's what all this one is about. As you can see, if I hit a rectangle with a bullet, the rectangle will disappear. And uh, at the moment, because I'm running in debug mode, uh, I don't get killed by the uh, the descending mobs. So let's find out how this all works. So the first thing we'll look at is the the new bullet class. Uh, so uh, as before, we've got the um, the usings up up here, um, same as we would have for the uh, other classes. And then uh, what we're creating here is again a proper full class so that here's the constructor and uh, all we're doing is passing in the uh, graphics device because at this stage we're kind of fixing the rectangle uh, internally in the class we're not uh, giving it any external information so uh, we're setting up the rectangle with a default uh, x and y coordinates of zero and then um, a width of 10 and a depth of 20 and a speed of a thousand um, again we've got um, this debug um, thing from the shared folder so if we're running in debug mode we're going to reduce the speed to uh, half uh, this active flag just set to true uh, initially um, and then we're positioning the rectangle dependent on the player as rectangle x width uh, and so on so that it appears at the top of the player rectangle in the center when the bullet is 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 uh, spawned so that sets that up uh, update is fairly simple we we are uh, decreasing the y value so that the, the rectangle goes up the window and then when it reaches the top um, it becomes non-active active is then set to false and at that point we can delete it from the list of uh, bullets the draw function is very simple it's just the built-in um, extend uh, uh, monogame extended fill rectangle which just fills it in with the selected color which i've made uh, yellow here so it's, it's quite a simple um, glass it, it just uses the same principles as we had with the mob and the player in that we're just creating and drawing and updating the position of a rectangle it's just that this one we are sending in an upward direction and it's colored yellow so that's uh, fairly straightforward now the um, main class let's have a look at that so we are let's check each of these functions in turn we'll go through them so the first one that we need to look at is the load content let's just might minimize these for the moment get some out of the way okay so load content is similar to what we've done before so we uh, are setting up the player with the create player um, then we're adding um, some new uh, mobs um, now we've actually got um, the, the the mobs if you remember we're actually sending the size through to them but when we do a new bullet we're just kind of using a default size so we're not actually supplying that 
uh, but we don't create any in this stage in the load content. Uh, uh, all we all we do is creating the mobs so that they're going. Now this is this debug thing. I've set debug to true so that uh, we can make some changes to slow things down to stop us being killed when we get hit by a, a mob. Uh, and then the game state is set to play. So that's um, some small changes there. It's really just these couple of lines. The debug to true uh, is the, the the one that we've changed there. So next we're going to do the update function. So uh, we've now got some new code here, which um, allows us to fire bullets, but at a fixed maximum uh, interval. So we don't want it so that when you press the space bar down, you just get a continuous stream up the, uh, it looks like a, a continuous line running up the screen, uh, which is multiple bullets or one following each other. So we wanted to restrict how many that we could fire. So what we've done is this new bullet timer, um, which is set up here as a kind of um, variable that's local to the whole of this cl uh, class, um, is set to naught uh, and float value. So it has to have an F behind it to, um, to determine that it is a, a float. And this um, new bullet timer interval is set to 0.2 seconds. So that means that we will get a new bullet uh, maximum every 0.2 seconds. You can of course change that if you wanted to uh, make more bullets available, reduce it a bit, or if you want, if, if you think that's too many, then increase it a bit. Um, and then this kind of flag allow new bullet is set initially to true. Um, you'll see the purpose of these in a moment. So uh, what happens here is this new bullet timer, which is initially at naught, is increased by delta time. And when that timer reaches the interval which we set, which is 0.2, then allow bullet, new bullet is set to true and the bullet timer is reset to zero. So that means as this runs at 60 frames a second, that every 0.2 seconds we will be allowed to fire a new bullet. Um, that's handled by uh, this uh, keyboard state is key down uh, keys. Uh, I've actually used both the keys up and the keys space here. Uh, it's entirely up to you which keys you use. I, personally, I use the space, but you could use the, if your fingers are on the arrow keys anyway, and it's easier to press the up one, then fine, do that. And that will then call this shoot command. So let's look at shoot and see what that does. First of all, it checks, are we allowed to fire a new bullet? Is that Boolean flag set? In other words, has enough time passed? If so, we're going to add to a list here of bullets. Now this is set up here. We've got a private list of type bullet, which is called bullets. So it's kind of um, defined here, but has not been set to anything at that. So at that point, it's still null. So we're now, um, going to add to it. So we're going to add um, a new bullet and all we're passing to it is the graphics device. Uh, and so that creates our new bullet. And it, we don't have to pass the player because the, um, the, the player is, is visible to all other uh, files in a C-sharp program, so we don't need to pass in the player for it to see it. The, the bullet is quite um, capable of dealing directly with the player. It doesn't have to be passed in at all. It's visible to all the um, uh, all the files in this project, uh, unless you make them private. So there we go. Let's get that back to where we were. So we've got um, uh, so we've got our um, uh, so we've got our uh, bullet added to the list here, and then we uh, are resetting the allow new bullet to false and the bullet timer to zero, so that we're ready to fire another uh, bullet as soon as uh, as soon as that uh, timer is reset. Uh, so we, after we have, um, uh, it doesn't matter whether you kind of do the shoot bit first or whether you check these other things on the um, 
Python version, I believe I put this shoot thing before we checked the others. I don't think it makes a great deal of difference. It all happens in such a fast time that uh, it, it really is not that relevant. So first thing we're doing here is to check the collisions between the player and the mob. In other words, is a um, mob coming down and crashing on top of us and with the potential to kill us. So let's have a look at um, check mob player uh, collisions, which is this one here. So first job is to update the player's position. Then we're going to go through each mob in the list. So we've got a list of mobs here as before, and we're going to update each mob so that its position is reset. And then we're going to check whether uh, each of the mobs in the list, there was eight of them if you remember, intersects with the player's rectangle. Now this intersects is built into monogame. So in the if you've watched my Lua version, I've put an intersects um, function in Lua, but it's one that was written myself. So this one is the built-in intersects. And you can inter intersect a rectangle with another rectangle, a circle with another circle, and I believe, although I've not used it, you can define um, like a, a polygon that you can interact with another polygon um, that's a more complicated because you have to kind of make some definitions for it but uh, this is very simple you can just choose is the rectangle that the mob is surrounded by intersecting with the player and if it is then you've been hit and you're dead but just so that um, you can continue testing without getting constantly destroyed i've just put this if not shared debug so the the exclamation sign here means not so if not shared debug then we're going to quit so that's how the um the mob player thing works now the next thing to check is the mob bullet collisions here which is another uh, one so this is the mob bullet collisions so this one is slightly more complex in that First of all, we're looping through the mobs, and then we've got an inner loop which loops through the bullets. And for each bullet, for uh, and in each mob, we're checking are the rectangles for the bullets intersecting with the mob's rectangle. Uh, and if it is intersecting, then we reset the mob back up to the top of the window so that it uh, reappears at the top there. And then we remove the bullet from the list using this C sharps remove at index J. Um, the reason for doing the bullets count from back to front, so we're starting at, let's say we've got five bullets, uh, then we're starting our count at uh, five minus one, which is four, so index four, and down to index naught going down one each time. So we're doing the loop backwards so that if you are removing a bullet, then you're not going to get an error because you've uh, removed a bullet and its index has changed or disappeared. Um, once that's been done, um, um, we are then going to look through the rest of any bullets that are still left that haven't hit any mobs. And again, we're going to do them in a downwards count. Uh, and if the update on that bullet fails because it's already gone off the top of the screen, then we're going to remove it again. So that will get it, get rid of it all from the list until the list is uh, uh, empty, of course. So that's how the um, the uh, collisions work. Um, so uh, I think we've covered everything there. Uh, draw. Um, we already had the bullets in a, a for loop to draw those, so we're going to do the same with the mobs there. Um, so that I think sorts it out. We've the just checking, yeah, bullet draw, mob draw, uh, the player draw, of course, is done here. So, yes, that's all three of our uh, objects that are currently on the screen. We've got the player then one or more or zero or more bullets and then a number of mobs so we're going to draw each of those in in turn in the draw function uh, load content uh, we've only changed is the set the debug to true initialize is the same uh, shoot i've been through 
So these two new functions we've been through and process events is from the last time. So that's how to do the same thing in C sharp as we've already done uh, in Python and uh, Lua Love 2D.